I'm John from Fly 8 Mike Alpha, CFI turned airline pilot turned back to CFI. Come along on my journey, flying Alaska to Florida and beyond. Last time on Fly Mike Alpha, Steph and I headed out to the Knick Glacier, flew over some amazing ice, and then popped into this little tiny dirt strip there right next to the glacier and got some good hiking in before heading on back to Anchorage. Okay, so flying out to Knick yesterday was absolutely amazing. A little bit gray weather, and today it's way better, but it's also like gusting to 35, 40 miles an hour. Uh, I think uh, Anchorage was calling it like 20 something gusting 35 knots. So it's pretty windy. You can see the windsock right there. And we're gonna go ahead and because I mean, ultimately the reason we're here in Anchorage, right? It's for education. Yeah, it's all about education and being safer pilots, not just flying around awesome freaking places all day long. So we're gonna go ahead and hike up here, bring the cameras with us, get some awesome footage of mountain wave turbulence and cloud formations and all that stuff what happens when you have some serious wind blowing across some serious hills should i uh take the tags off my new backpack i want people to think i'm cool so <laughs> think you could do that for me sure i don't want people to know that i'm not really from here okay spoiler alert uh camera microphones don't work very well at all in 30 to 40 and 50 mile an hour winds you really can't hear anything we're saying whatsoever but hopefully you can get an idea of what the wind speed is exactly just by how much we're leaning forward at this point we gotta go all the way right up there so luckily most of our climb was on the downwind side of the mountain in the shadow of the wind where all four and a half pounds of pomeranian stayed securely fastened to the rocks but as we got towards the top, people were literally crawling off the mountain on their hands and knees, sliding down in this serious wind, so we decided to put Sia securely in Steph's backpack so she didn't get blown away and become a projectile. Although she thinks she's a pilot, she still has not quite mastered taking off her landing on her own just yet. The wind's aloft forecast was pretty accurate. At 3,000 feet, the winds were gusting about 60-70 miles an hour easily. But we stayed up there, got the camera set up, and got some awesome time-lapse footage. We use a lot of this footage in the private pilot, instrument pilot, and commercial pilot ground schools for FlyAtMikeAlpha.com and all those instructional videos we make. And after being sufficiently frozen in the wind for a couple of hours getting that footage, it was time to start making our way back on down the mountain. She's looking good! So, per usual, it was much easier going down than it was going up. We earned ourselves a little bit of ice cream before heading back to the house to hopefully go flying tomorrow if the weather would cooperate. Only in Anchorage do puddles white cap in the parking lot. <laughs> it's windy. And shocker, the wind did not really cooperate the next day. So we just kind of hung out, did a whole bunch of video editing, tried to get caught up on all of that, and then decided to head back to the airport, grab the bikes out of the airplane, and go mountain biking. Now, it's time to go bike riding in Anchorage, check out some of the cool trails, and then we've totally earned ourselves some beer, and then get back in 6-2 Delta and make some more cool videos tomorrow. Found a moose on our bike ride. Steph's gonna go uh, coax it over here. <laughs> so I don't have to get too close. Hey, Mr. Moose, don't mind us. If you can't fly every day, fly at mikealpha.com, bud. And it looks like the guy who made the map forgot to put the you are here arrow on the you are here he put place it here. on the map. Yeah, he put it there. We're not there. <laughs> we're, we're somewhere all up in that area. Right around here. Maybe around here? Yeah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and more moose. Luckily, they're not on a runway right now. 
He's just hungry. And finally, the wind calmed down, the visibility improved, and we decided to go flying. So now, after a few days of no flying because of weather, did you know that people in Alaska, actually, there's some sorts of weather they don't fly in? I didn't know that. But where are we going to today? Seward. We're going to Seward. How are we going to get there? Through Portage Pass. Portage Pass. Portage Glacier. Portage Glacier sounds really fun. I like glaciers. Glaciers are great. We should go see a glacier. So we pre-flighted the airplane, hopped in, started heading towards Seward into some weather that got pretty interesting along the way. Lincoln Tower, Cessna 2962 Delta, holding short one four, Charlie Tudor overpass. Cessna 2962 Delta, Lakehead Tower, Lakehead wind 170 at 5, let's summon our 2979er, by the Tudor overpass departure, runway 14, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff 1462 Delta, Tudor overpass. Here we go. Is there a certain altitude or different altitude outbound that you go inbound and outbound on the two-door overpass, or is everybody the same altitude? That's a good question. Um, I know the inbound, uh, I believe, is 1,000. The outbound is probably lower, uh, but we should look that up, actually. You can just ask them, what altitude is it outbound? Be like, hey, you got time for a question? <laughs> Seriously, you just say, hey, you know, Lake Hotel, you got time for a question? Yeah, Lake Hotel, six adult, uh... If you have time for a question, I uh, was wondering, outbound altitude is 800 or 1,000 for two door overpass? 60 Delta, it's 900. 900, 60 Delta, thanks. I thought it was, yeah. Yeah, I split the difference. <laughs> yeah, you just ask him, hey, you got time for a question, then you let go of the mic, you know, and you wait for him to respond, he'll say, yeah, go ahead, and then you ask him your question. Yeah. That way you don't block the frequency for too long. Yeah. And that way he's ready and, like, listening for your question, because he may be on the landline or something that may miss your question. Okay. Oh, I'm not sure how I feel about this, uh, what's in front of us here. Yeah. What are we at? I'd say we're down to like five miles up ahead. Yeah. But you just, I just don't know if it yeah, it's gonna becomes get better a wall. Or worse. Yeah. I would go to that first, um, Because we that could island. go through Hope, um... I would go to where it's, you see that island or that point that's sticking out that's yeah. in the haze? See once we get there what kind of viz we've got. Okay. But, because I'd say that's about five miles out. But yeah, that's, uh, less than good. How far does the turning an arm go in? It goes in quite a ways. Oh yeah, this is just the beginning. Yeah. That's okay, because we're over water. <laughs> so there's no towers and stuff to hit. But I like being over water. Nobody builds cell phone towers on top of the oh, ocean. I actually like it too. That's how I was able to get through the trench there from uh, Montana to Prince George. Yeah. It I was mean, if the like... engine quits, you'll die, but you know, at least you won't die from hitting anything. Exactly. Yeah, it'll just be the cold water that kills you. I'm curious what it's like on the uh, other side of the range. So yeah, I would uh, drop down, like if we're going to go straight here, I would drop down like 500 feet. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. At least it's calm. <laughs> yeah, just don't speak too soon. <laughs> yeah, there's really no uh, winds aloft to speak of. The water's pretty glassy everywhere I'm looking. Hey, you still got like at least like two miles of his, maybe three. Yeah. Terrain. Pull up. Terrain. <laughs> Terrain. Oh, thanks for acting as a real yeah. GPS. <laughs> Give you your Taz warnings. Uh. Terrain. Pull up. <laughs> Don't sink. Don't sink. <laughs> Wow, that's really comforting. <laughs> yeah, just all those wonderful sounds you totally want to hear oh, yeah. when you're flying into like one mile deteriorating viz. It's really cool. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and say we're going to take a different route to Seward. Probs, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't even think I want to go into this valley here. Uh, Not unless we were higher. By a lot. Well, I mean, it's visible, I just don't know. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn around and go through the Hope Valley. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. 
I hope hope is better. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. I see what you did there. See what I did there? Yeah. So funny. Want me to fly while you text? Sure. Somebody should probably fly the airplane. Um, did you just make the sign of the cross? Are you praying? Really? <laughs> well, at least there's a runway right below us. That's kind of handy. I camped right down there where the airplanes are. Right where the no camping sign is. <laughs> How high do you think we have to be to jump over into uh, by Quartz Creek? They're here. About like 4,000? Um, depending, it looks like the highest go to 4,500. So 5,000 to be safe, but yeah. unless we can find valleys to go through. Yeah, I'd buy that. Got about 3,000 for now. We got another, what is that, 20 mile ring? 10 mile ring? Yeah. Yeah, we still got time. Time to climb or turn around or figure it out. Yeah. Well, the ceiling looks higher, so I'm just going to like bump a little power and just kind of like slowly climb. Okay. So we're right over the trail right now. Oh, the biking trail? Yeah. Probably my favorite trail in Alaska. Really beautiful during fall. So like September. Yeah. It's a really fun, like, uh, splitting it into three days. Makes it so you camp for two nights, basically. Oh, three days of pedaling a bicycle, you say? Wow. Yeah. That sounds like lots of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Uphill, too. Well, the last oh. day is downhill. <laughs> okay, sign me up for day three. <laughs> I'll catch you on uh, evening of day two, grab some beer. Get ready for day three, downhill, <laughs> downhill, tram kind of guy. You could get dropped off with a float plane. <laughs> that sounds good. Ah, uh, 4,000 is making me feel more warm and fuzzy. Thank God there's like no winds aloft today. Cruising above all these little peaks. There's a pretty river down there, right below us. Resurrection Creek. Uh... I'm hoping that we're going to get past this little bit here. <laughs> I'd give it to right about yay there. Make a go or no go decision. Not feeling super warm and fuzzy about this one. I know. Well, we're coming up on 4,500. So we're still good on train for right now, and OAT is about 37. And rainy. We got a couple degrees to go there. Maybe like 34 might be a good time to think about descending. So give it like another 30 seconds, and then we're gonna decide if we wanna just make a 180 or what. Still seeing the terrain right below us. Oh, like ground contact? Yeah. Okay, cause I'm pretty much all on instruments. So needless to say, the fact that you're watching this video right now and I'm sitting here talking to you and then had time to edit the video after the fact, clearly we didn't die on this trip. Uh, but we just got into a little bit of uncomfortable weather, a little bit less comfortable than I would have liked it to be. I'm not really into over dramatizing things, but we'll show you some more of that in the next episode. Also guys, Steph's getting a little bit annoyed at me with all my silly nerd aviation trivia. So since we're spending a lot of time in rather close quarters with each other, I figured that rather than bugging her with all my silly questions and trivia, I would just bother you guys with it and you can let me know in the comments below what you think. So for starters, what airport is this? Look at the diagram and comment in the comments below what airport you think that is. It helps keep me entertained at least anyways on these longer flights. So you guys know what to do. Give us a thumbs up, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, hit that button down there on the right, and hit the little bell right next to it to keep up with all the updates on this channel. You'll get notified when we post new videos so you can see where we're at in the country and when we are getting close to you. And of course, next time on Flight Mike Alpha, we continue our trek up into some rather deteriorating weather through the pass, eventually get out to some nice clear weather over beautiful lakes and streams, continuing on over to Seward, popping in for a great dinner right by the airport, and then flying back over the Harding Ice Field for an amazing sunset and beautiful views over the ice as the sun was going down on our way back to Soldovia. So, 
if you don't see much ahead of us, I think uh -oh. it's probably a good time to turn around. 